Hi everyone, it is Mixed Media Monday and I'm Rita Bearcat. I am sharing some mermaid stamps today, some mermaid projects, so um, I hope that you are totally ready to get this going. I'm also going to talk about a couple of giveaways and um, we're going to make a canvas together. Hi Margie. And we're going to talk about a couple of giveaways that are going on, well, that are, will be going on starting tomorrow, and one of them is going on right now. Thank you, I already get hearts, yay, hey. So welcome, hi Michelle, hi guys, as you guys are popping in, hi Ashley Lynn. Welcome, welcome, and welcome to, to my replay viewers as well. Hi Norma, hi guys. Awesome. So yes, we're going to do mermaids today. So we are going to get started. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them below. And if I don't catch them live, I will catch them later after the video is over. Hi, Sharon. And um, I can always see those questions and answer them because it's Facebook and it will notify me. Hi, Beverly. Hi, guys. Okay, so I'm going to pan down. We're going to get started and... Hopefully I don't miss any comments. If not, I will catch up. Okay, so panning down. All right, so I've got some stamps here we are going to be working with tonight. I have been, um, I don't know what happens. Sorry, I got an echo. I get the mermaid kick every once in a while. Hi, Danielle. Hi, guys. Oh, well, if Brian's not here, oh my goodness, he's going to miss mermaids. So I've got uh, three stamps from my Technique Junkies line, uh, this little floral mermaid, and I've got the seagrass, and I've got the clam, and I thought it would be really fun. I have this um, canvas. I kind of tore it apart, you guys, because, you know, I mean, is it me, or have you ever made something and you just really didn't love it? And if you don't really love it, I think it's okay to take it apart because to me I would rather take it apart and make something that I really really love than to have that canvas sitting there and, and I don't even I don't like it so I took a piece of clay with this mold with this um, texture plate and I glued it on there um, so that's why you're seeing it's kind of not pretty because it's got like ripped paper here got some coloring on here and I just didn't like it so I want to make something that's very very much full of mixed media and put some some of the mermaids on it I thought that would be really cute so if you like mermaids this is the video for you and if your friends like mermaids you should totally share this video and you can swipe and share it all right, thank you, Margie. She's already been putting up uh, different links. You're awesome. All right. Oh, there's only two left. Ooh, I'm gonna have to check that inventory. Okay, so we're gonna set this aside for now. I've got some paper down here, and I do use mixed media paper or I use watercolor paper when I am stamping because I always know that I'm probably going to get it wet. I mean, that's just kind of, that's kind of me. And I'm, I'm going to position my stamp here real quick. Okay. So I'm putting it where I'm going to want it. I'm going to use a, um, I actually probably should have used a different ink, but this is what I have in front of me. I've got a pigment ink in front of me. We're going to stamp with it. What you want to use is something that you know it's not going to move if it gets wet. Okay, so there's the first one. Set her aside. That's the floral mermaid. And I'm going to position this right here. Whoops. I guess I have to turn it over. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna ink that up really quickly. And so you wanna use, if you're gonna be, you know, stamping an image that you're gonna paint on, depending on, you know, how much water, I, sometimes I really do soak my images because I use so much water 
This one's got a little bit of glitter on it, so. <laughs> Whoops, let's try that again. So let's try that again. So if you're going, if you know that that's what you're gonna do, you might wanna have some watercolor paper or mixed media paper. You know, something that's gonna be uh, holding up to all that water that you're gonna put on it. Hi Renee, hi Jessica. Hello, hello, and anybody else who I missed that came on. All right, now I've got this clamshell. Let's put this one here. And ink that up really quickly. And so you also want to use an ink that's not going to be a water base. So you don't want to use a dye ink because then you know what's going to happen. The minute that you get it wet, it's going to bleed. And so you don't want that when you're trying to get those nice crisp images. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's set this aside. So now we've got our three images looking good there. I am debating, I'm like, hmm. Okay, so Sharon is saying, what would I use mixed media or watercolor paper for? Okay, what, what would be the difference between watercolor paper, I guess, and mixed media paper is what you're asking. Um, when you're using watercolor paper, I will say I love watercolor paper better, okay? I will say that. But it is more expensive because it's usually a heavier weight than a mixed media paper. A mixed media paper is meant to take those beatings, so you can do a lot to it, and it's it's strong, and it will um, hold up with all your painting and adding your different layers. However, sometimes if the mixed media paper is not thick, right, if the pounds, the weight on it, is not as thick as some others, I've noticed that some of them actually do buckle, and I hate that. So, um, you know what I mean? If I know, if I know it's just mixed media and I'm just getting color on it and I'm not doing an actual character, doesn't matter if it's mixed media paper. If I'm gonna do a character on it where I know that I wanna have a really clean, crisp stamp, I want to make sure that I'm using watercolor paper instead so that it's not going to buckle, it's not going to do anything, and it's going to hold up. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's pretty much, you know, they're, so they're very similar. One's thicker than the other. One um, also has more texture. Usually uh, your watercolor paper has more texture than the other one. All right, so I've grabbed some different paints. I thought we might be using some color shift on top of some regular blue for the background, some like green and blue. And I'm thinking if we're doing that, then we probably should do something a little bit brighter for our, oh, you know what? I think I wanna do two layers of the seagrass because I think I want to put one on top of this, so let's let's get one more. So that was a good question, Sharon. Thank you for asking that. Let's see, and let's find our seagrass. And let's get another. And you can find paper that is uh, watercolor or mixed media paper that is smooth or texture. You know, it all just depends. I prefer the texture paper better. I don't know, that's just me. Some people prefer the, uh, like a Bristol paper, which is um, actually more for nice drawing and that kind of a thing. 
Um, so, you know, you have to look at your the different brands and, and look at it. And I like to feel paper before I buy it and see how porous it is. All right, so let's grab, this color shift is a green flash. And we're gonna put some, we'll do a little bit of both. The green flash and the dragon flash for our seaweed. And I forgot to grab a paper towel. Oh, you know what? I was going to use this plain brush, but, you know, since we're doing mermaids, I think it's time to use these, don't you think? I think it is. <laughs> now, these are also um, from Plaid. I think they're at, I think they're at Joann's. I can't remember, but they're so cute. And I did get these. I got these at Creativation. All right, so yes, I think we need to use these mermaid brushes. All right, let's get, I wanna get that wet first. When you get your brushes at first, sometimes they're super stiff because there's something on them to keep those bristles together. So they look really nice in the package. So it's good to get them wet and kind of rinse off whatever that stuff is. Because at first it won't be pliable and you definitely want to be able to um, you know, work that, work that brush. So I am not being super careful. I'm, if I go out of the line, it's going to be okay. I'm not real super worried about it. And I'm actually thinking I am going to go out of the line because we're going to cut this out and put this as a whole onto the canvas. So let's just go in between here. Oh, you know what I just thought of, you guys? I think it would be really cute to add um, one of those sand texture paste, like on the bottom. That would be cool. Hi, Shonda. Hi, guys. If you were, if you come on, and I didn't catch you coming on. And now if you don't, if you're not chatty and I don't happen to glance at it right when you come on, then I don't even know that you're on here. And some of you whom I've met in person, they're like, oh yeah, I watch you every week. And I'm thinking, why didn't you ever say anything? Because if I don't recognize your name, it's because you've never said anything. <laughs> oh, so you should definitely be talking to me. That way I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> So welcome, welcome. All right, so I'm just kind of playing with between the two colors and just going in between so that we fill up this area. So it's gonna look like a very full seaweed kind of scene behind our mermaid. And this, I, you know what? Thank you. Uh, somebody said they love the this stamp. You know what I love about this stamp is that you can make this. You cannot do the circles, or you know, just cut around the circles, and you can make this into um, like another scene. Like it, could, it doesn't have to be an ocean. You know, it could be a really thick jungle, or you know, a fairy. A fairy garden and put flowers in front of it. That's what I love about this stamp. It's very flexible. I love things that you could use, you know, for other things. It's so fun. Okay, so I'm just dipping. I'm not even rinsing my brush. I'm just dipping between the two different colors and just trying to fill in the space. Just because we're not, I don't want to I don't want to try to match the background because it's going to be a really funky um, background. All right. Okay, 
good. You should be coloring while I color. <laughs> That's a good idea. Okay. So now let's go up here. Let's do this one really quick. Coolness. And I have no rhyme or reason to why I'm doing one color. I just don't like doing all one color because then it tends to um, look flat, right? Your project will look flat when you do it all one color. And because I'm just doing paint and we're just going to put this together super quickly in mixed media, uh, I'm not really worried about shading or anything like that. It's just kind of naturally doing it itself because we're working with two different shades of the same color. You know, I like easy. I like hard too sometimes, but sometimes you just wanna make something pretty, right? Okay. So I'm going right out here. And it's not perfect by any means, and that's okay. And you know what that means when, when you do something and it's um, not perfect? That means they know it's handmade and it was made by you and that's what makes it special. So don't worry about being perfect or lining, thing up, lining things up just right. Just have fun, right? Just do something creative. And I do like the color shift also is a little bit translucent. So it's not like completely covering up my lines or anything, which is nice too. And let's go ahead and fill this in a little bit there. And let's do a little bit there. Let's go ahead and fill this section in right here. Yes, made with love. I like it. Okay. Great, so there's our seaweed. Let's go in, let's do our clamshell. I've got a little bit of this. Let's see, what is this? This is the violet flash. Hi, Christy. Okay, let's grab a little bit. We'll use this wider paintbrush. This will be fun. And again, I'm rinsing it off first because, you know, it's brand new. So I want to get that stuff off of there. And I actually want this to kind of be... Uh, the color shift is acrylic, so I want it to be watered down just a little bit. Just gonna go right over here. Now, if you, oh yay, um, if you haven't been by the blog, you need to go there because Christy did a really cute project for us as a guest designer for the readabearcat.com blog. And she did a fantastic job, so you should go check that out if you haven't already. I've also got um, a giveaway going on on my YouTube channel. Now it's on a particular video, so, um, and I meant to put it up right before and I didn't um, the link to it hi Danielle oh look at Danielle you're like on here while I'm live <laughs> so anyways um, I've got a giveaway going right now on my YouTube channel and you have to go there on the particular one it's called uh, water color love I think it's called and you'll see the little the little purple unicorn girl in the front of it 
And so that one has a, vi a giveaway on it. Uh, the other thing that we've got, um, thank you, Margie, for putting up my blog there. Yeah, definitely, you guys want to check out the blog. And yes, I have a YouTube channel. Um, and then I also have something tomorrow. You guys definitely want to be checking out the blog because we're going to do a, a blog hop. So that starts tomorrow. And yep, there, there will be a giveaway for that too. You know, those, you know, you know, I like to do giveaways. I think they're fun. They're fun. And sometimes the people that never comment but visit all the time, they comment on a blog hop, but they won't comment on a regular post, which is interesting to me, but hey, whatever. So blog hops are fun for that purpose. Okay, and you see I used that green on there. Oh yeah, so Margie's got the link there. The watercolor love giveaway video. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, and yes, subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, I need a pink and I don't have one here. Um, Let's see. Oh, let's use this one. This is, this is fire coral. Oh, so that works. <laughs> Kinda goes with our theme. Actually, I'm gonna go back to this smaller brush, a round brush. Thank you for the hearts. And I'm just gonna use the lid because I'm gonna use so little of this paint. It's gonna be super quick. You know, I use different um, paints or markers or you know different things it just really depends on the project and this particular one I'm super excited I don't you know I don't know if you guys have been watching the the videos but um, if you watch the videos from creativation I showed the uh, brand new Mod Podge Ultra and that's the reason why I wanted to do this all in paint because the Mod Podge Ultra can seal paper even, and it will make it very, very stiff and very solid. So that's why I wanted to paint this because the thing about it is that you're supposed to saturate the paper, right, before you put it on your project. So once this is dry, then I can spray this. I will spray both sides with the Mod Podge Ultra and I can also use that to put it on my project but tonight we're just we're gonna paint it because you have to wait for it to dry completely so we're gonna paint it we're also going to paint our background and I want to use the screen in the middle for kind of like a highlight here just kind of cool looking. See, a lot of times I'll go in here with a marker, um, like a permanent. But I've, I've been experimenting and I haven't found yet a marker that, that works with it really well. Um, yeah, we don't, I don't, we don't have a link for these brushes. I will try to find it, Sharon. Um, after this episode and I'll put up a link on the website for tomorrow's post. Cause I actually, I didn't look it up. I wasn't even thinking about using this until I got on here live and then I'm like, oh yeah, I should do that. Yes, Mod, Mod Podge Ultra, it looks like this. There's a matte and then there is a, a gloss. And so it's very cool because it makes things really um, super solid, like super hard, so that the finish on it, you can even use it outdoors, which is, so I've been wanting to try it with paper, 
but I, I mean, they've tried it with other paper like um, pattern paper, but I wanted to try it with my art to see how, you know, how does it look and if it alters the art in any way. So I figured, hey, well, might as well try this, right? Try it. That way we'll know if it works. Okay, but you know, I, that's why I wanted to make sure I was using paint. This color and that's kind of cool because it's kind of looking turquoisey when I'm mixing the dragon flash with the purple so that's kind of cool looking well there is a happy surprise <laughs> I love that when that happens oh hey Hey, Nick. <laughs> um, and Christy, your thing, I think went live on Friday. All right, so we're gonna give her this long purple hair. And we'll give her some highlights. With the greens. Oh my gosh, I keep hearing this clock ticking, driving me crazy. But I need it because I totally lose track of time when I am painting or drawing. And hours can go by and I'm like, ooh, I need to get out of here or I need to go do something. <laughs> something else. Nick, I can tell you, you are truly missed, okay? By me. I want to mix this. Let's see if we can get this turquoisey color again by mixing this green and purple. Yeah, you know, there, there's something very soothing about painting and drawing and, and doing art. And that's why I love for people to just do it because even if it's not the most perfect result, just doing it is very calming. And a lot of times if my kids are having a stressful day, I'm like, hey, you know, go, go grab some markers or some paint or something. Go color something. Yeah, no, there's not there's not any heavy metal in my life. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right, let's give her. Oh, let's do the inside. I forgot to do the inside of her hair. I probably could have gone in with a smaller paintbrush, but that's okay. We're just swinging it. I'm just swinging it. It's okay. It's all good. All right. <laughs> all right. Let's go back with this coral. And I'm going to... Oh, I need to water that down because I want to water this down so that I can see. I've got a baby wipe here. So that I can see the outlines of this stamp. So a little bit more. Let's do her flowers. Oh, that's awesome. Shonda said that if she that she went to her library and they have a coloring group, I think that would be so fun. 
Although, I don't know, when I get together with other people, I don't get very much work done. <laughs> I don't I don't get very much um, of my projects done. I've never been one to be able to um, unless I've got everything pre-planned and pre-packaged, I can't I can't get it done in a group. You know how people do these crops and stuff and I'm like I'm always thinking, oh that would be so fun. But I get to chatting and I get nothing done. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna take actually I think this coral is enough. It's, well, let's grab an orange. Okay, if you don't have a flesh tone, an orange will do really well. Oh, tell Marcus I said hi. I miss you guys. He's my tin man. <laughs> um, I miss you guys. I miss it over there. Those are my Colorado peeps. Okay, so if you are looking for a flesh color and you don't have one, you don't happen to have one or you don't happen to have one handy, but you have an orange or let's say like a tan, you can, oh, there is my timer, you can water it down and get that flesh. Ooh, she's a little bit too orange still. Hold on. Okay, so I'm lifting that up. Let's grab a little bit more water. Yeah, I love Colorado too, but not in the winter so much. <laughs> in the winter, um, I can take a hard bass. You know, like it was fun. It was fun while we lived there, and there are some. There are great people. I love the people of Colorado. Um, but the snow and. You know having to deal with that and kids was really hard okay so you see how she looks kind of peachy that's good you know so you can do this with a like a tan or a brown you can do it with a brown but you have to um, you know just be really really careful because it's a lot easier to darken her up than it is to lighten her up so if you get too much dark on there like if you get a really dark brown sometimes you might cover up all the lines so you definitely want to you know water it down and because it is acrylic and it's water based once it's dry it's still good right it's still going to be permanent oh not with not with your aches and pains in the winter yeah winter is rough especially if you do have um, things all right so we're going to set this aside to dry completely and then I'm going to cut it out then for this let's quickly do our background and I'm just gonna grab let's see let's start with this blue this one is parrot blue and let's go ahead I just love the, I love these brushes <laughs> this just makes me so happy just even looking at these brushes Okay. Yeah, my kids, they have nothing but fantastic memories of Colorado. They loved, they love, love, love the winters. You know, they love the sea, you know, the the um, the snow and, and of course snow days and building snowmen in the front lawn and everything. They love that. You know, but they didn't have to, of course, clean up all the mess when they came in with their muddy boots <laughs> um, especially because we had hardwood floors in that house and man hardwood floors in snow and mud and it's just not fun and I mean now they're bigger so it wouldn't be so bad but three kids in car seats in the snow it was not easy you guys <laughs> It was not easy at all. Okay, so let's, I need to grab some more paint here. And I love doing, I love the color shift. And I also, but I love uh, making it, making a mat next to the color shift because it just makes it pop that much more. So that's why we're doing the, just this matte color first. And so it's gonna look 
great next to the color shift. And this is just a piece of clay. So I will say when you're painting, when you're painting clay, it's an, an air dry clay. You know, know that you don't want to completely soak it. So I'm not adding any water to my paint at all. I'm I'm doing, you know, a dry brush and trying to keep it you know, as dry as possible because I don't want to warp the, I don't want to get the clay all soaked and wet again. And I have let this dry. And if you want to use like clay with the like texture pieces like I've done here, and sometimes it will buckle, like it will fold up, right? If you want to make it flat, you know, just lay a book on top of it after it's completely dry. So go ahead and let it buckle a little bit, that's okay but let it dry completely first and then set a book or something on top of it. So I I did these last week. I did a bunch of clay pieces like this and I let them dry and then I sat, you know, books on top of them. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm doing in pieces because I know that I'm gonna use all these clay pieces. Um, so I'll do like a whole bunch of them at once because it's not like you can, you really can't glue it down while it's still wet. So if you're you're gonna work with clay on your mixed media, you, know, you wanna make sure that that's completely dry before you add it on. All right, and we're just gonna go on this little section here. So I'm doing all my sides because I tell you guys all the time, make sure that you guys are doing your sides so that it doesn't matter what angle somebody is going to see your project from, it's going to look fantastic any way you look at it. So I'm, you know, making sure I've got that nice coverage. And then, let's see, I'll just make sure I've gotten all the edges. And I would, you know, turn it around and, and look at it from different angles because that's when you'll see, oh, I missed it here, or I missed it there, and get in those areas and get that paint done. Okay, so that's our base. Okay, and I want to go over, I'm contemplating if I want to do I think what I want to do is let it dry completely because this has gotten quite wet and I need this to be dry before I do anything else to it. And then we'll add another layer. I'm probably going to go over it with the color shift, probably this lighter color. I was going to go with this, but I'm thinking, I don't know, uh, probably this. So probably this green flash, because it's it's more of a, um, I don't know what you call this color, like a chartreuse kind of color, um, and go over these some of these areas just with my finger, right? So that those raised areas really pop. And then I will cut these out and layer them on top of these, and I will show you them on my social media. So just make sure that you're following me and you can see those, the finished project. Now, so that's what's going on over here on Mixed Media Monday. I'm Rita Barricat. I am so glad that you guys tuned in and I hope that you like this project. Um, please do share with your friends if you do like this project and make sure that you go check out the giveaways, right? Tomorrow we're doing the blog hop and then on my YouTube channel 
is the um, giveaway that I'm doing right now, all of my die cuts. So anyways, it was really good seeing you guys here on Mixed Media Monday. Thanks you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you guys next Monday. All right, make sure you guys are following me. See you soon. Bye.